Hey guys, Dark Wolf here. I hope everybody is having an amazing day, uh, night, morning, weekend, whatever it may be when you're watching this video. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to my den. I really appreciate everybody stopping by. Uh, I appreciate every last subscriber I have, whether you've been a subscriber from day one or one day. So, uh, with that said, guys, I want to go into an article that was released just today. Uh, I know a lot of you will understand and find the importance in this, especially in relation to the Mandela Effect. But before I do that, I want to go over some vocabulary because there's two terms that I always have an issue with getting mixed up as far as their meaning goes. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. So the first term is subjective. Subjective means based on or influenced by personal feelings, tastes, or opinions. So, a subject, also relating to or denoting a case of nouns and pronouns used for the sense of a subject of a sentence. But we're focusing on the first one, the first definition. Based on or influenced by personal feelings, taste, or opinions. This is opposed to objective of a person or their judgment not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in consideration or representing facts. So, we've got two opposing diametrics here. We've got subjective, which is based on personal feelings, and objective, which is not. I have a big problem getting these two mixed up a lot. And I know I'm not the only one that does this. So, why do these matter? Well, MIT today has released an article. It's a very interesting article. Thank you, Buster1978, over on Twitter. Uh, for those who don't know, we are over on Twitter. Chick reposted this. Uh, from Buster 1978 so thank you Buster for finding and, and posting this today like I said this did come out today it says a quantum experiment suggests there's no such thing as objective reality or fact-based reality physicists have long suspected that the quantum mechanics allows two observers to experience different conflicting realities now they've performed the first experiment that proves it Guys, before I get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring that bell for notifications. And uh, come on back by our next videos, and we appreciate having you. All right, guys, this is uh, posted on March 12th, 2019. It says, back in 1961, the Nobel Prize winning physicist Eugene Wigner outlined a thought experiment that demonstrated one of the lesser known paradoxes of quantum mechanics. The experiment shows how the strange nature of the universe allows two observers, say Wigner and Wigner's friend, to experience different realities. I'm going to reread that. The experiment shows how the strange nature of the universe allows two observers, say Wigner and Wigner's friend, or me and you, to experience different realities. Since then, physicists have used the Wigner's friend thought experiment to explore the nature of measurement and to argue over whether objective facts can exist. That's important because scientists carry out experiments to establish objective facts. <clears throat> but if they experience different realities, the argument goes, how can they agree on what these facts might be? That's provided some entertaining fodder for after-dinner conversation, but Wigner thought, Wigner's thought experiment has never been more than that, just a thought experiment. Last year, however, physicists noticed that recent advancements in quantum technologies have made it possible to reproduce the Wigner's friend test in a real experiment. In other words, it ought to be possible to create different realities and compare them in the lab to find if, whether they can be reconciled. Today, Massimiliano Proietti at Heroi Watt University in Edinburgh and a few colleagues say they have performed this experiment for the first time. They have created different realities and compared them. Now, guys, before you get too wild and woo-woo, they didn't create two different parallel full universes. This is more of a... Um, double slit version of creating realities as you see here 
the experiment was set up a lot like what you see here. In other words, it ought to be possible to create different realities, compare them in a lab, find out whether they can be reconciled. I just read that, didn't I? Yes, I did. Their conclusion is that Wigner was correct. These realities can be made irreconcilable so that it is impossible to agree on objective facts about an experiment. Wigner's original thought experiment is straightforward in principle. It begins with a single polarized photon that, when measured, can have either a horizontal or vertical polarization. But before the measurement, according to the laws of quantum mechanics, the photon exists in both polarization states at the same time, a so-called superposition. So it's both vertically and horizontally polarized until such time that it's measured, in other words. Wigner imagined a friend in a different lab measuring the state of this photon and storing the result, while Wigner observed from afar. Wigner has no information about his friend's measurement, so is forced to assume that the photon and the measurement of it are in a superposition of all possible outcomes. Wigner can even perform an experiment to determine whether a superposition exists or not. This kind of interference experiment showing that the photon and the measurement are indeed in a superposition. From Wigner's point of view, this is a fact that superposition exists, and this fact suggests the measurement cannot have taken place. But this is in stark contrast to the point of view of the friend who has indeed measured the photon's polarization and recorded it. The friend can even call Wigner and say the measurement has been done, provided the outcome is not revealed. So the two realities are at odds with each other. Before I continue with that um, quote, by that I want to back up and go back over this. So from Wigner's point of view, the measurement hasn't been done. It's Everything's in superposition. While from the friend's point of view, it has been. So two realities exist. One for the friend, one for Wigner. This calls into question the objective status of the facts established by the two observers, says Priyadi and company. That's the theory, but last year, Castle of Brunker at the University of Vienna in Austria came up with a way to recreate the Wigner's friend experiment in the lab by means of techniques involving the entanglement of many particles at the same time. The breakthrough that Priyadi and company have made is to carry this out. In a state-of-the-art six-photon experiment, we realized this extended Wigner's friend scenario, they say. They use these six entangled photons to create two alternate realities, one representing Wigner, one representing Wigner's friend. Wigner's friend measures the polarization of a photon and stores a result. Wigner then performs an interference measurement to determine if the measurement of the, and the photon are in superposition. The experiment produces an unambiguous result. It turns out that both realities can coexist even though they produce irreconcilable outcomes, just as Wigner predicted. This raises some fascinating questions that are forcing physicists to reconsider the nature of reality. The idea that observers can ultimately reconcile their measurements of some kind of fundamental reality is based on several assumptions. Again, the idea that observers can, us, us, you and me, can ultimately reconcile their measurements of some kind of fundamental reality is based on several assumptions. The first assumption is that universal facts actually exist and observers can agree on them. But there are other assumptions too. One is that observers have the freedom to make whatever observations they want. Another is that the choices one observer makes does not influence the choices other observers make, an assumption physicists call locality. If there is an objective reality that everyone can agree on, then these assumptions all hold. But Priyadi and company, or Co's result suggests that objective reality does not exist. In other words, the experiment suggests that one or more of the assumptions, the idea there is a, a reality we can agree on, the idea we have freedom of choice, or the idea of locality, one of these must be wrong. Of course, there is another way out for those hanging on to the conventional views of reality. That is, 
there is some other loophole that the experimenters have overlooked. Indeed, physicists have tried to close loopholes in similar experiments for years, although they can see they may never be it may never be possible to close them all. Nevertheless, the work has important implications for the work of scientists. Quote, the scientific method relies on facts established through repeated experiment measurements and agreed upon universally, independently of who observed them, end quote, says Priodi and company. And yet in the same paper they undermine this idea, perhaps fatally. The next step is to go further, to construct experiments creating in increasingly bizarre alternate realities that cannot be reconciled. Where this will take us is anybody's guess. But Wigner and his friend would surely not be surprised. Alright guys, again, that was released today. And it basically says factual reality doesn't exist. It isn't real. It goes a long way towards the Matrix idea, which we all know I'm not a fan of. But if that's what the science is saying... It doesn't matter if I'm a fan of it. The truth is the truth, regardless of whether we agree with it or not. Um, I can say I don't believe in lightning. It's not going to stop it from striking me. <laughs> it's not going to change the fact that it does exist. Or does it? Now, all facts are brought into question, aren't they? It's something to really ponder over, guys. Um, is it just at a quantum scale? Does it go to the uh, mac macro scale where we see Mandela effects? Are we all truly living in separate realities? Is that what's really going on? Are we all truly living in our own world, our own reality? Is the consensus of reality breaking down? Or is it that there is no free will? I really don't like the idea of that last one. Maybe locality is, is it right. Maybe science got that part wrong. Guys, when it comes to the Mandela effect, a crazy phenomenon that nobody can explain, myself included, we've pulled together research teams of all kinds to try to figure this out. We've gotten so many steps closer. We found a lot of information from the Monroe Institute, uh, from the CIA themselves. Uh, I like how SMQ stated the other day that at this point, when you're arguing about the Mandela effect, you're not arguing with us anymore. You're arguing with the CIA. When you're arguing about reality, you're arguing with the CIA. You're arguing with MIT now. True scientists. I know a lot of you guys don't like scientism. This isn't scientism. This is scientific fact or <laughs> questionable fact I guess at this point um, but it's a very interesting article guys I wanted to bring it to you uh, I'm not going to make this really long I just wanted to uh, get this out there and and uh, I hadn't seen any videos about it yet so thank you Buster1978 thank you SMQ thank you Chick uh, the entire hashtag Mert team you guys are awesome keep up the great work and I'll see you on Twitter Ladies and gentlemen, remember always, stay awake, but dare to dream. Bye, everybody.